called parking enforcement services that use wheel clamps, bottom feeders, and says the government's working on legislation to ban or regulate them. Phil Twyford and Consumer Affairs Minister Chris Fafoy are exploring ways, ways to curb the predatory behaviour. At the moment, there's no limit to what someone can charge for removing a clamp from the wheel of a car parked on private property as the industry operates under a voluntary code of conduct. Chris Fafoy is in our Wellington studio. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. Do you agree with Phil Twyford that they're predatory and that they're bottom feeders? Oh, I think he's expressing the frustration I think most New Zealanders feel when they see another story of, you know, the typical one of the likes of a grandmother being asked to fork out six or $700 almost instantly to get their car back. So I think this has been happening for far too long, which is why Phil and I put our heads together quite early on in the piece to try and take some action um, to to stop this kind of behaviour happening. What's the largest amount you've ever heard of someone being charged? I think I saw something in the uh, media the other day about $700, which is obviously exorbitant, um, usually from people who can ill afford to pay it. Um, but I think balancing that up with um, the property rights of people who might own a car park if someone is uh, wrongly parked there is, is the balance we're trying to get. Are you going to ban them? I think that balance will mean that we'll have to look at other ways to do it. Um, I think it's um, the the main problem and the frustration has been the amounts of money um, that have been asked of people to cough up immediately. Um, but then I think um, you know um, banning outright might just cause another problem and it's our, it's our duty to make sure that we get um, the, the solution right and don't cause another problem. So banning, you say, is not the solution? Uh, well, the, the advice that I've seen to this date, um, no. I think um, you know if you look at what most people think the problem is and what the officials think that, and I think their problem is uh, it is the amounts that people are being asked to pay so I think um, because there is no regulation or legislation in place for us to do anything now they are, they are the options that we're looking at at the moment Yeah because it's voluntary at the moment so you're saying putting something in legislation it would be some sort of regulation would you want to cap the amount for example that that's, one of, the, that's one of the possi- that's one of the possibilities that okay. the officials we haven't come to a, a final decision yet but that's certainly one of the strong recommendations that's come through from the officials What's the information you're getting about the figure that would be suitable to place as a cap on that amount? Not seven hundred dollars. That's yeah, too much. But so how um, much less than seven hundred dollars? Um, well, quite a lot. Um, but also making sure again we get the balance right of if people uh, do incorrectly park uh, in a car park and you know uh, you're the pr- property owner and um, that mm. you get the level right. So the officials oh. are coming to us with a range of options and it's our it's our decision to get that uh, to get that right. Yeah, hard to get a handle on what exactly that means though. I mean, because we haven't talking, come to a final decision yet. But are you thinking still hundreds of dollars would be a reasonable amount? for people to be paying to get their car, have the clamp taken off it. I would have some problems with that too, Susie. I think, so hundreds know, is too much, so what, a hundred bucks, you say? Uh, I'm not going to make that decision here uh, on Morning Report, mm. um, but what I'm making quite uh, patently clear and obvious is that um, the likes of six and $700 uh, is not acceptable, um, but balancing that up with um, property rights is where we're trying to get. Um, we're not quite there yet, um, and we've also got to look um, at issues around enforcement, making sure that um, you know if we put um, a, a, a price on what is acceptable, um, then how do you enforce that? And that's some of the work that we're asking officials to get done to make sure it actually works. Both the AA and Consumer have actually called for an outright ban. Why do you think that goes too far? Because I think people do have property rights. Mm. Uh, if you owned um, a car park and people illegally parked there or wrongly parked there or parked there if they knew they weren't meant to, then I think you do have mm. some recourse. So getting that balance right, I think, is what we're trying to make sure we get. So what about the idea of breach notices then? How long should there be between, for example, getting a breach notice on your car and the clamp actually coming in? Good question. And that's all the kinds of issues that we ask the officials to go back and, and come back uh, with us with advice. And that's... And in the area of enforcement, um, which we're trying to make sure that we um, uh, get to an, a, an effective level because there's no use us bringing in a cap or something like that um, if we don't have the ability to enforce that at all. Have you spoken to the clamping industry about this? I haven't personally, but I know that there, there's frustration out there in amongst the public. Um, and as I say, I think the stories of six or $700 to get a, a car unclamped sure. uh, is... Uh, for most New Zealanders, unacceptable. Aren't they a part of this that needs to be brought in, though? Like, don't you have to talk to the clamping industry? And, and how pleased do you think they'll be that you've come out ahead of doing that, calling them predatory and bottom feeders? Well, I'm quite clear that the kind of behaviour um, that has been going on for some time now uh, 
isn't satisfactory to the government and isn't satisfactory to most New Zealanders. Um, we'll talk to them in and amongst the process because there will pro- most likely to be legislation um, come th- um, through as a result of uh, the work that we're doing, uh, and they'll be part of that. But I think we're going to make it quite clear that you know, um, for far too long this has been going on. Something needs to be done about it. Is this little more than political populism? Well, I think you know there's there's a problem to be sorted. I think most people think that you know six or seven hundred dollars um, being charged of people to get their their car unclamped is unacceptable, uh, and there is no mechanism at the moment uh, for uh, any recourse from people or uh, any cap. Um, so you know uh, we're in government to sort out problems. Here is one, and we want to do something about it. It's been, as I say, there's there's no legislation or mechanism that in place for us to do anything, and I think most New Zealanders want us to do something about it. Appreciate your time this morning. Chris Farfoy, the Consumer Affairs Minister there. Uh, do let us know what you think. 2101 is the text message number on email at morningreport at radionz.co.nz. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at NZ Morning Report. Would you back a ban on clamping? It's 17 minutes past eight. The irrigation industry is confident that an end to government subsidies will not be the end of large-scale projects in this area. Irrigation New Zealand is holding its...